Folks, our greatest asset in life is, it's not our bank balance. Our greatest asset in life is our relationship balance. Go check out a person who has good relationships in life, what they can achieve with one phone call, others cannot achieve with a million dollars. I repeat, a person with good relationships, what they can achieve with one phone call, others cannot achieve with a million dollars. And many studies have been done which says, people who have good relationships, they live, they live happier and healthier lives. Our relationships, friends and relatives, they are our support group. Now, relationship, where are we talking about? Personally, professionally and socially, our family. People who are emotionally strong. You see, in any crisis, they come out stronger. And people who are emotionally weak, they fight, they distort and they create, they fall apart. And folks, people who are emotionally weak people, you can never build lasting relationships with them. Why? Because, you see, they are moody people, they are whimsical people. They are all sugar and honey to you today and they all to out to catch your throat tomorrow. They are imbalanced and imbalanced people you cannot trust. And any relationships foundation is trust and trust is built on integrity. Now, personally, professionally, there are many people who join groups like the Chamber of Commerce, BNIs, Rotaries, the Lions, to network and they think they are building relationships. And their definition of relationship is make connections with these people because someday they could be useful. Now, usefulness goes, friendship also goes. There is no relationship. They are only takers. They are parasites only to suck whatever they can get. They are only takers. And relationships are never built on taking. They are always built on giving. In Singapore, we have an office there. One evening as I was coming, somebody met me in the lobby and he asked, you come for dinner? I said, yes. And he said, I hope you met some people who, are, who could be useful to you. I felt like giving him a little bit of peace of my mind. See, all he was talking was, I hope you met some people who could be useful. He was only looking for what could be he could get out of it. He does not understand that meeting a good person is good enough. And that is the sad part. They are parasites. How do you build relationship with such people? Relationships are built on adding value addition to the relationship or to the other person where you need to give something in life. Now, there are four kinds of friendships in life. One is called the friendship of convenience. I have my neighbor, our kids are same age, we enjoy the same food, we laugh together. Our kids go to the same school, we carpool together. And God forbid in the middle of the night if there's a crisis, it is convenient to be together. This is called friendship of convenience. Convenience goes, friendship also goes. The second kind of friendship is called the friendship of usefulness. Well, keep connections. He could be useful someday. He's a cop, he's a doctor, he's a lawyer. Whatever it is, he's a politician, he's well connected, whatever, he could be useful. Now usefulness goes, friendship also goes. And the third kind of friendship is when you have a common enemy. Common enemy goes, friendship also goes. But the fourth kind of friendship which is built on, which is lasting friendship and it is built on, guess what? Mutual respect. Mutual respect is the word, not tolerance. Now, folks, I and my wife live together because we respect each other. Not because we tolerate each other. If we live together because we can tolerate each other, it is only a matter of time be before we fall apart. Tolerance is only postponing the blast. You see, the day respect for each other goes, we can't live together. Same thing, employer and employee work long term together, not because they can tolerate each other, but because they respect each other. If they work together only because they can tolerate each other, it's a matter of time before they part. Now, keep in mind, those who think friendships are built 
to extract something out of it, someone or they could be useful. That is not the purpose. If I have a friend who's been a friend of mine for 20 years and God forbid tonight if he needs help, who is he going to come for help to? Is he going to make new friends tonight? The most natural person is the friend of 20 years. Now, is it my duty to help? Answer is yes. If I help him, am I doing him a favor? No. And if I don't help him, am I behaving like a friend? Answer is no. Unless, unless he does something illegal, immoral, then it is his problem. Then I'm not interested to help. And if I still help, I'm an accomplice to him. He becomes a drug dealer. And if I help him, I am an accomplice. Remember, a person who goes to steal inside, a person who holds the ladder for the thief is as much a thief. This is the time to part company because my loyalties are to my values. This is the time to part. But important thing is, keep in mind, helping each other is a duty of a friend. It is never the purpose of friendship. If it's purpose, purpose finishes, friendship finishes. Helping each other always remains incidental to friendship. So keep in mind, folks, to build lasting friendships and must lasting relationships, we must be willing to give and add value addition to another person's life. And that is what keeps a long term relationship. They are strong bonds. Go build it. You will live a much healthier and happy life.